In March of 1996, I was taken to a psychiatric hospital and restrained to a bed, a little bit like this guy. My family was devastated when the psychiatrist said that I could have bipolar disorder or even schizophrenia. But I wasn't worried. What seemed insanity to everyone around me, to me, seemed more like a spiritual awakening, the most sacred and special experience of my entire life. But what I didn't know until I studied the work of visionary psychiatrists like Dr. Carl Jung, Dr. Lauren Mosher, Dr. John Weir Perry, and especially Dr. Stan Groff, was that many people diagnosed bipolar also have very powerful spiritual experiences very similar to my own, and that these experiences all start with a collapse of the ego. And while not always, usually this ego collapse is caused by a period of radical change in a person's life. Now, what exactly is an ego? Well, that's not such an easy thing to explain because in our society we say like, oh, this guy's got a big ego and we, we talk about it like that. But that's not really it. The ego is our false self. It's who we think we are, but we're not. And the best analogy I can come up with is to imagine that you're a baby chick and that you're inside the egg. But you also think that you're the eggshell. The eggshell is you, and in that sense, that's what our ego is. Our ego is the shell around us that we use to protect ourselves, but at the same time, it limits us. It limits our full potential. So eventually, we need to break out of that ego, or shell, in order to grow. So just to give you an example of what an ego is like, an ego is like an egg. And here we have Bill Shatner's false self, his egg, his ego. And a big part of Bill Shatner's ego is that he's 19 years old and he considers himself his dad's son. Bill and his father have a great relationship. He respects him a lot and that's a big part of who he thinks he is. I am my dad's son. He's also Sue's boyfriend. Sue is his longtime girlfriend. They've been dating for a couple of years and he's proud of that relationship as well. Another relationship that's very close to him is his relationship with his city, New York. He considers himself a true New Yorker, he's a Yankees fan, and he really wouldn't live anywhere else if you asked him at this point in his life. And being a true New Yorker, for him, life is all about success. If you're not a winner, then you're a loser, and get out of the way. And so Bill is very competitive, and as part of that competitive nature, he considers himself to be a very good student. He studies very hard, takes his studies very seriously, and as part of being a good student, he's working hard to get into a good university. He's also a Christian. His family is Christian, and he was raised reading the Bible. He goes to church on Sundays, and the values and the beliefs of Christianity are very close to him. So all of these different aspects of Bill's life, his religion, his relationships, his attitudes towards life, his desire to get into a good university, his city, all of these things compose who he thinks he really is on a subconscious level, and they all represent parts of his ego that he shows the world, in a sense his false self. And because he works very hard to maintain this image of himself, he has a lot of worries like, what if I don't get into a good university? Or what if I lose the people that are close to me? These sorts of things. The ego causes a lot of fear. But then something happens. His father dies. And that is a very traumatic experience for him. He really doesn't know what to do with himself, and he suffers greatly with this death. He suffers so much that when it comes time to study for his exams, he really doesn't study very much, and he fails his exams. But to his surprise, he finds that in failing, he really doesn't care that much that he failed, and he really didn't care about university the way he used to. Maybe university was something that his father wanted for him more than he did. But along with that, you know, what happens to him as the great student? He starts to wonder, well, am I a failure? What's wrong with me? I don't want to do this anymore. I don't know why I'm pushing myself so hard. And so with his father's death, he starts to question a lot of things in his life. And as part of this questioning, he finds himself going deeper and deeper into a depression. And it's at this point that his girlfriend Sue leaves him because she just can't stand to be around a guy who's depressed all the time. And with that breakup, he really starts to question his values now. And he starts to think to himself, you know what, ever since my dad died, I want a simpler life. Life is not about success and hard charging for me. Life is about simplicity. That's what I want my life to be about. And with that shift in values, he starts to look in different directions. And one of the directions he looks is Arizona. He decides to enroll at the University of Arizona, where he chooses to start a whole new life. 
But once out there, what happens to his Christianity? Well, it kind of goes up in the air because he meets all of these New Age people with completely different beliefs than what he was raised with, and they've just got this other way of looking at the world. It's very mystical. They do a lot of tarot card reading and massage, and he really doesn't believe in all that stuff, but he doesn't really know what to believe of his Christianity anymore either. And so with that, he starts to feel a little bit strange, a little lost. So many changes have happened to him so fast, and so much of his old identity, of who he thought he was, has just disappeared overnight. It all leaves him feeling like his feet are not quite touching the ground. Then, in the middle of all this change, Bill might find himself at a party. And he's had a few drinks, maybe a little marijuana, and then, boom, a total ego collapse. Everything he thought about himself seems to have disappeared. He doesn't know who he is anymore. All he knows is he's got this huge surge of energy pulsating through his body, and this energy is literally taking him on a journey. He's going to a place that he's never visited. He's taking a journey into his very own soul. You literally feel your soul awakening and all of your senses coming up so strongly in this manic process that you don't really know what to do with yourself and you're really confused. You start to ask yourself questions. What is reality? What's real? Am I going crazy? Am I dead? Am I dreaming? I don't know. Who am I becomes a very important question once you're capable of even asking yourself the question. Because let me tell you, it's a mad and mystic journey, but when possible, it should not be suppressed. Now it's important to point out that for some people, these experiences may be very scary, and they may in fact be better off taking medications to stop the experience. However, for many others, what we know today as an acute psychosis has the potential of being a tremendously healing spiritual experience, something which can truly transform a person's life for the better. The trouble is, with the way our society aggressively handles people in these experiences, the opportunity for healing rarely happens. You see, even in the most ideal situations, there will be parts of the experience that are very difficult, even painful to go through, and to make it through, most people are going to need very compassionate support. But unfortunately, this type of support is rarely given because as a society, we have very little understanding of these experiences, and as a result, we're very fearful of them. And that's why it's the mission of my YouTube channel, Bipolar or Waking Up, to let people know that once you deeply understand the nature of these otherworldly experiences, you'll see that in truth, they are far from the meaningless madness which our society says they are. In fact, if your manic episode was anything like Bill's, or my own, it might just turn out to be the most important experience of your life. Now what can trigger an ego collapse? Well, it could be almost anything, but for most people, like Bill, it's the combination of a series of powerful life events and changes that cause the first experience of the collapse of the ego.